Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We're doing another deep dive deck. This is my budget deck tech series, and we're looking at Brea Ethereum Shaper. I'm calling this Clue Shaper because it's all about using clues. This was a big weekend for my son. He is nine years old as of yesterday. He's really into Lego and pirates. So I got him, well, we got him this, I should say. It's a pirate ship and you can build it three different ways. So yeah, you can have like a pirate's island and a pirate's hideout and all kinds of stuff. I thought that was pretty cool. I'm gonna be like the biggest present. And then my wife showed up and her parents got him a present as well, which I'm gonna try and fit on the camera here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's the One Piece ship. This is like, oh my God. I thought this was a big Lego set, but the box is straight up like, you can put this box inside of this box. Oh, it is just massive. And it's got Luffy and all the other characters, so that's pretty fun. Anyway. Oh my gosh, just so many. So, so much Lego he got. He cleaned up, for sure. And, okay, here we go, though. Right, so, Brea Ethereum Shaper is your. It's a white, blue, black, red. Basically, no green. That's how you look at um, four color combos is mostly by like what's not there. So when she enters the battlefield, create two one one Thropter creature artifact tokens with flying. Okay, sure. The big thing is her ability. Pay two, sacrifice two artifacts, choose one. So it costs two mana and two artifacts. That's getting a little steep and kind of like not easy for every deck to do. Our deck is going to be really good at it. The Sacrifice 2 is going to be very easy with Clue Tokens because every Clue Token is an artifact, right? Also, we want to sacrifice them. We don't care about sacrificing them. We're going to do that anyway. So it's really the two mana that's maybe the bigger deal. Anyway, so she can deal three damage to target player or Planeswalker. Great. Um, especially, I think Planeswalker is better. You want to make sure that alt isn't going off. Hey, there you go. You can do this at instant speed also, I should point out. Target creature gets minus four or minus four until end of turn. That's removal. That's pretty easy creature removal. As long as you can keep making your tokens and you've got a little bit of, you know, you got two mana, basically you're gonna be able to like keep taking problems off the board. Um, and finally you gain five life. Hopefully you don't need that. If you do, it's there, you know? So anyway. The, yeah, the reason for this choice, again, for choosing this commander, is that I do want I want to make a token deck, or a clue token deck, that was all about clues, and she's just the perfect commander for, like, being all about the clue tokens. Okay, the color challenge. Basically, what I've decided to do is, between two of my shows, the looking or the deep dive deck, the budget decks text, and uh, my deck check-in, where which is deck reviews, and try and do the full color challenge. I've actually got a good amount done already, so let's take a look at that. The white, black, and red are done. All of the dual colors are done already. Actually, I was surprised I got all of that done. And also, yeah, Naya and Esper. We've got Gund as of last week, and then uh, yeah, we also have. Jess guy with my uh, Convoke deck. And then finally, Kazri and as well as um for my five color, my Wooburg decks already covered. So we're getting there. We've got Yor today. So that's gonna be another one off the list. That's nice. Getting there, getting there. We are almost done already. Oh my. Okay, so Brea Ethereum Shaper once again. She, is not, she has a great color identity for a clue deck, but also has a high synergy with artifacts in general, right? She is a great clue, or a great artifact commander in general. That's why she really works here. Her activated abilities are not, uh, yeah, her activated abilities are not the centerpiece of the deck. So a lot of commanders that have like activated abilities, the entire deck is built around those activated abilities. That's not what we're doing here. This deck can very easily win without her even on the board. We, it's not built around her. She's helping the mechanics. She's not like the centerpiece. I kind of like or commander decks better where like the commander isn't like absolutely necessary for the deck to work. 
Um, it's a real disadvantage for a deck to have that. If they have something like Kenneth's Transformation or Trapped in the Moon or something like that, they can transform your commander into a, basically like a 1-1 one -one token with no abilities. Uh, that is a lot worse than your, it just going back to the command zone and you recasting it, right? They trap it on the battlefield. That's actually what I suggest people do in Commander. You should always have that option in a deck. But anyway. Deck price is 3968 at the moment. Um, it keeps changing. Even yesterday, it was slightly more expensive. So, let's see. Create a fully integrated for, uh, design objective, I should say, the full thing. Create a fully integrated four color deck using the clue tokens as the mechanic. Again, four color decks I feel like get a little too all over the place. Like, you need something to really tie a four color deck together. Two color, you can do a lot of different things and still have it synergize. Three color gets more focused, and then four color gets kinda all over the place. I think it can be a lot harder to focus a four color deck than like a three color deck. So, Having clues is a very flexible way to do that. Anyway, also check this deck list on moxfield.com. Okay, part one, Brea Ethereum Shaper. So this is about the commander. Okay, we've already introduced her, but we'll go over really quickly one more time. Again, white, blue, black, red, your, and yeah, she's a four, four, enters the battlefield, create two, one, one, blue throfters with flying, yeah, sure. But pay two, sacrifice two artifacts, and you can choose one of these three options. Uh, giving a creature minus four, minus four, gaining five life, or dealing three damage to an opponent or a planeswalker. I think this might actually come in more handy than you realize. Uh, she is an interesting commander and very versatile beyond just her color identity. In this deck, you'd be surprised. I think this deck can do like kind of anything you need it to do. Her ability to sacrifice artifacts for a host of problem-solving abilities is an ideal mix with the easily produced clue tokens. Again, yeah, her sacrifice ability with clue tokens is just the perfect mesh. High synergy card, so we're going to start with Kappa Cannoneer. This is more high synergy in the deck than with the, with the commander per se, but anyway. Five and a blue. Sounds not good for a 4-4, four, four, but he has improvise, meaning that, yeah, Every artifact you control pays for one. You don't have to tap the artifacts or anything, right? Yeah, oh no, you do have to tap them. Okay, uh, I'm thinking of... What is the other one? Uh, affinity, right? I was thinking of Affinity. But anyway, yeah, you can you can tap five artifacts, tap five clues, and pay one blue. And done. Oh boy. Anyway, he has Ward 4. People hate ward, but still, it's a, it's better than nothing, right? Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, which is going to be all the time, put a plus one, plus one on ca uh, counter on Kappa Cannoneer, and it can't be blocked until end of turn. So even in the span of two turns, this is going to probably just get massive and be unblockable. Um, oh boy, it's going to hit hard. Even starts as a 4-4. Four, four. So the first clue you make, it's already a 5-5 five, five unblocko um, that you can probably cast for one mana. <sighs> Alright, so Zerda the Dawnwalker. I actually have a, uh, a budget deck for him. I'm going to try to remember to, or I think maybe her. It looks like a her I've somehow. It. It's a fox, right. I'm going to put that up in, link up in the corner if I remember, which I usually do. But anyway. It's a really fun deck. I did one that was like a combination of uh, uh, Slivers and yeah, Zerda. So she, it's a weird way to put the, them together, but effective. It ended up being really good. Abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. This can't reduce the mana cost below one. So basically, Brea's abilities also we have a lot of other abilities. The clue tokens have the ability, right? Yeah, it's an ability. Pay two, sacrifice it, draw a card. Sorry, tap and sacrifice it, draw a card. Um, that's an ability, right? So this is going to turn all of those. Getting one rebate that may not sound like a lot, but it's going to be so, so much. We're producing tons of clues. So for Bray's ability, that's kind of sorted. If you can just pay one mana and start like 
giving creatures minus four minus four or like doing damage or like whatever you want um gaining life then um that's gonna add up really quickly uh also target creature can't block this turn one and tap zerda it makes it so one creature can't block um that actually might be very useful in this deck we got a lot of uh, evasion synergy so yeah armed with proof for two and a white it's an enchantment when it enters the battlefield they investigate twice having extra sources of clues is always nice but what we want it for is clues you control our equipment in addition to their other types and have equipped creature gets plus two plus zero all of your clues are just equipment all of a sudden so you can just like start like throwing them on again if zerda's in for one mana you can just start throwing them on and yeah you're gonna make that creature really really big if you if it's your commander you'll get to commander damage very very quickly especially if you double her damage or give her double strike both of which this deck can do so yeah it'll get things done quickly ever write public reporter my son is coughing now he's home yeah i think i mentioned that one in a blue for a one two piper right deals combat damage to a player investigate that many times whenever you sacrifice a clue put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control so we've got ways to sacrifice clues or sacrifice any artifact like nissa of Traken is going to let you just sacrifice a whole bunch and draw that many cards so and yeah just get all kinds of value on top of that it doesn't say activate the clue it's a sacrifice right anytime you sacrifice a clue you don't have to activate its ability to sacrifice it just sacrifice it these are going to be so many plus ones plus ones going wherever you want once again on your commander if you do it you get to commander damage very quickly do it on her and start making her into like a clue token generator that is just going to do piles of damage as well uh oh boy blank moth urn five for this artifact at the beginning of each player's pre-combat main phase, so every player, if Blink Moth Urn, Blink, Blink Moth, blah, 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 Blink Moth Urn is untapped, that player adds colorless to his or her mana pool for each artifact he or she controls. Okay, so this is potentially going to help everyone. If it's untapped, we have multiple ways to tap artifacts in this deck, so you can avoid doing that for sure. Um. Also, yeah. You, it's gonna even if it is untapped the whole turn it's going to help you way more than everyone else even other t uh artifact decks are probably not going to have as many artifacts like your artifact clue tokens you're going to be pumping out at, at a level that is just like hard to keep up with i think um and that colorless mana is just going to be so useful for you as well academy manufacturer okay Three for this artifact creature. If you would create a food, or sorry, a clue, a food, or treasure, instead create one of each. Oh boy, this makes sacking things very easy for Brea because yeah, you can sacrifice the uh, treasure to make a mana, and then use that mana to pay one, and then sacrifice the other two things to use her ability for one extra mana. That's it. So yeah, it's going to be real easy to do with him on the battle or it's on the battlefield i keep saying him for everything i don't know why but anyway okay so part two the plan right what are our deck objectives how do we win so the objectives number one is always ramp especially when you get into four colors ramp and mana fixing very important clue creation you want to make clues for this clue deck yeah. clues do more more functionality out of our clues and finally win cons remember these are like general win cons we actually have a whole bunch more in the deck okay this just multiple ways for this to win ramp okay we got chromatic lantern three for this artifact that's for one man of any color sure but lands you control have tap to add one mana of any color so your mana fixing for the game is done right there. If you get Moon Silver Key, this is what you go get. Moon Silver Key lets you go get a basic land or a, an artifact that makes mana. Get this or something 500 Year Diary, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. 
Wayfarer's Bubble. Okay, this is great because we're going to have Recursion. So you sacrifice this, you will get a basic land put into the battlefield. Oh, wait. Yeah, into the battlefield tapped. And then, yeah, you shuffle your library. We're going to have a whole bunch of ways to recur this. So we can keep putting it back into the battlefield over and over and just like you using it to ramp basically. So yeah. I am seeing wildfire. This is a weird kind of ramp. This is actually recommended to me by uh, Tim from um, EDH on a budget. If you haven't checked out that channel, you should. And yeah, basically this will destroy a land and then you get to go get a basic land, which sounds like a bad thing to do to yourself, right? But destroying the land doesn't have to be destroyed for you to go get a land. We've got pretty much all of the bridges, the indestructible artifact lands we've got in our deck. So you can target one of those bridges, or not all of them, but as many as you can get in. But you can target those bridges, one of those bridges with this and just go get a land. Basically is red ramp for two mana, uh, not too shabby. Also, you get to draw a card as well, which is another thing Red isn't known for. Archway of Innovation. This is a land that is under a dollar still. Buy it if you gone and buy anything. But anyway, it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control an island. Probably do. You can add one blue. The next spell you cast this turn has Improvise, meaning you can use your artifacts to pay for it. So yeah, all of those clues are now mana rocks for one spell. You can, yeah, just pretty much cast something for free. Almost for free, I guess. You do have to pay the colored cost still. And 500 year diary, for three and a blue. Again, uh, this enters the battlefield tapped and you get a blue, tap it to add a blue for, e blue, sorry, a blue mana for each clue you control. So if you got a whole bunch of clues and moon silver key, go get this instead of chromatic lantern, basically, and you're going to be set for mana. Um, you can also pay two to sacrifice it to draw a card. Basically, it is also a clue. Clue creation. All right, so we got Lazav, Rare of Faces for Demir. He's our blue black, a two three, and whenever he deals, he attacks exile target card from a graveyard, then investigate. It's always great to have Graveyard Hate in the deck, and this is also going to Investigate, which is our main mechanic. Um, he can also become a copy. Every time you sacrifice a clue, he becomes a copy of another creature. So yeah, that's... Um... Oh, sorry, until end of turn. He, yeah, he can become a copy of a creature you've exiled until end of turn. Let me read that out loud, because I said it wrong. Uh... Whenever you sacrifice a clue, you may have Lazav become a copy of creature card exiled with it until end of turn. So it uh, becomes a copy only until end of turn. It has to be a copy of something that is exiled from a graveyard. Still not that hard to do and pretty beneficial. Isa Opulent Ol Oligarch. So he, she's one white black. Again, Orzov, of course. Um... For two, three with death touch, already not a bad start. At the beginning of your end step, investigate for each opponent who lost life this turn. You're going to have all kinds of auto damage going off all the time. You'll probably damage all three opponents every turn. So you're at the end of your turn, you're going to make three clue tokens just off of that. Uh, very nice little trick. And whenever a clue token you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a one, one white and black spirit token with flying this ability triggers only once each turn so that kind of sucks this thing once each turn but a 1-1 one, one flyer token creature just every turn really good actually mm -hmm. also make sure if you have her out make sure you're sacrificing artifact you know those clues on other people's turns so you can make four every round merchant of truth this two white white for this Two five flyer, and when uh, uh, sorry, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, investigate. Clues you control have exalted. Oh, that's huge. Um, first of all, hey, you're getting some extra clues again. Very nice. But 
Boost to control have exalted. That means if you, you have a creature attacking alone, it gets plus one plus one for each clue you own. Oh my god, that's crazy. Um, your commander will get to commander damage very, very quickly if they're attacking alone. We also got lots of ways to make one creature unblockable. So yeah, you can make your commander unblockable. Attack alone instantly becomes this like monster. Um, and with double strike or double your damage, whatever way you want to do it, just one shot. Okay, unblockable one shotting someone is nice. Armed with proof. We talked about this one already, but yeah. When it enters, it investigates twice. It also makes everything, all your clues into equipment, which is nice. Wandering Dad. I think this is the funniest one, James Wandering Dad. A two and a blue for a two four. And this is a an adventure. So he could tap for two mana that you can use for abilities. Perfect for this deck, right? Uh, Brea needs two. Clues need two. You, or you can tap them if you got some kind of reduction from Zerda or something. You could use two clues or Brea and a clue. Whatever you want. So good. Uh, but yeah, his adventure is follow him x blue blue investigate x times so however much mana you can put into it you can make that that many clues especially if you can like if you've got archway of innovation you can tap all your clues get a bunch of extra mana to cast this sorcery to make a bunch of clues and then those clues can have exalted and then you just win you win is what happens yeah clues do more I feel like we've already talked about this bunch, but anyway, even more, I should say. Okay, so Astrid Path, and when she enters the battlefield, create a food token. Yeah, okay. Sorry, she's one one in a white for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you sacrifice a clue or food, she explores. So, again, that means reveal the top card of your library. Put that card into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. Then put the card back on top or in your graveyard. Basically, like surveil. So you do have to reveal it, but if it's a land, it goes to your hand. You can get your land drop. If it's not, you can either leave it at the top or put it into your graveyard if you're not really. Even if you got some of our recursion tricks out, maybe you put it in the graveyard because it lets you cast it. You know, graveyard is pretty much a spell book if you're set up for it, right? Nessa of Traken. I mentioned her already. Three and a blue for this three four. You have no maximum hand size. With all the card draw in this, it's very good. And Sonic Bo Booster. Uh, I almost said boom, but she, yeah. When she enters the battlefield, sacrifice X artifacts. Again, sacrifice X artifacts. Clues are artifacts. You can do that. When you sacrifice one or more artifacts this way, tap up to X target creatures and you draw X cards. So you can tap down someone else's board. And just draw a whole pile of cards also basically you're activating the clues and getting more functionality without having to pay any of the mana you just have to attack with her and she'll do the rest right you kind of just walk in and like take someone out after tapping down their board uh ho 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 so mean center peacock three blue blue this three four artifacts you control are clues in addition to their other types so she'll make all artifacts you control into clues as well which has all kinds of synergy in this deck of course uh yeah whenever you sacrifice a clue target creature can't be blocked this turn again sacrifice a clue it doesn't say activate sacrifice so if you sacrifice a clue to nissa's ability you can just make a whole bunch of things unblockable no problem and that does trigger before blockers are assigned so yeah They'll just be unblockable. It's fine. Yeah. Tangle Grove. Uh, Tangle Trove Kelp. I feel like I can't say that. Tangle Trove. Tangle Trove Kelp. Buh, 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 buh. Anyway. Five blue blue for this six six with Ward 2. At the beginning of combat, other clues you control become six six plant creatures in addition to their other types until end of turn. So all of your clues are now six six creatures. yeah that's where you get into like you tap down someone's board and then even though you use a bunch of clues you're gonna have a bunch more clues because you make a crazy amount of clues 
and those clues are now six sixes that could just go in and like smash and then you uh, at the next turn you still have all of your stuff because you lose you use clues as creatures to uh attack it's it's crazy also he is a clue so he could be sacrificed we don't do that please piper right we talked about piper right already yeah again nissa and piper together on the board scary right she'll sacrifice a whole bunch of things that will trigger piper and you'll just put a whole pile of plus one plus one counters wherever you want Wing con number one commander damage okay our commander starts as a four four so she's not bad merchant of truth as i said exalted giving your commander plus one plus one when she attacks alone and spear of leonidas is going to give your commander double strike we also have a way to increase double her power her attack power so there's more than one card you can use in this and frankly if you give her a bunch of plus one plus one counters and then use the clues to boost her power she might not even need the double strike right so this is maybe need the spear of leonidas or an, a similar effect anyway win con number two token combat we had tickle trove kelp already there's another one rise and shine for one and a blue it has overload for blue blue this was once again on EDH with the budget. They just finished a five part series on uh, finishers. This is a finisher from that. So yeah, I would definitely recommend checking that out. I'll try to put it up in the corner. I think I'm already putting another thing in the corner and YouTube only lets you do one most of the time. At least they used to, but we'll see. Anyway, rise and shine, yeah. Uh, it's gonna make all your artifact creatures or artifacts into four fours, right? So all of your clues are just four fours all of a sudden. That's uh, again, not as good as six sixes, but still it's gonna get the job done probably. Especially if you've tapped down their board or something like that. Cone of Cold, this is exactly, you don't need this, but it helps a lot. Okay, so three to blue, basically roll a d20, and for one to nine, tap all creatures your opponents control. For 10 to 19, tap all creatures your opponents control. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's untap step. So this has got a 55% chance of like giving you two turns to get the job done. So if you roll 10 or higher, which again on a, on a D20, remember 11 to 20 is 50%, 10 to 20 is 55%. So you got a 55% chance of just like basically shutting them down for the rest of the game turning off their defense and then you just walk in and smash no problem um yeah real real mean sack tokens okay so we got murkwood that's whenever you create our sacrifice in a, a token each opponent loses one life this is huge because it's create or sack right so even when you're just making those clue tokens that's going to do one damage and then you sacrifice them later that's another damage each clue token represents two damage to each opponent. Yoi. Got Nissa of Traken. If you made the, even, let's say, 10 clues, they've already taken 10 damage, you're going to sacrifice all of those. They'll take 10 more damage. You'll draw 10 cards. And yeah, tap down 10 creatures. Um, yeah. Number f con number four, I should say. I win. Mechanized production. Okay, so enchant artifact you control. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of enchanted artifact. You can choose anything you want. It doesn't have to be a clue, right? Then if you control eight or more artifacts with the same name as the one another, one another, not the enchanted one, just one another, you win the game. Just if you have eight clues, you win. Very, very, very easy to do to the point where you might want to take this out because it might be a little bit almost too easy to win sometimes. Part three, combos and tactics. So this is where we look at how to get the most value. Um, this is, I think, a little bit more simple than some of my other decks, but in a good way, yeah. Auto damage. So we talked about Murkwood Bats already. 
probably the best ones because just because the creating it does damage as well. Nadir's Nightblade. Okay, whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Again, even those two combined with Nissa of Traken, that's going to be, you know, if she sacrifices even five clues, which is very reasonable to expect her to do, you, your opponents are just going to take 10 damage and you gain five life. And you're going to draw five cards and tap down five creatures. Whew. Mayhem Devil. Okay, this is a different kind of one. One black red. Whenever a uh, player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem Devil deals one damage to any target. So this is good for two reasons. It's bad because it's not dealing one damage to each opponent. It's only one target, but it's any target you want, which is good. Also, it's anytime anyone sacrifices. Not just you, anyone in the game. So if anyone else has like a treasure deck or something, he's going to just pump out damage like crazy. Um, basically, it's like extra removal on top of your already pretty amazing amount of removal. Marionette Master, a four black black. This is probably what I should have put for the win con, but oh well. So yeah, she has Fabricate 3, meaning that you can put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on her or make servos. I'd probably go with the plus 1 plus 1 counters. So she can be a... F she's a 1-3 or she can be a 4-6. Whenever an artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to her power. So yeah, if she comes in as a 4-6, how many... Sacrifice 10 clues, they're out. That's already 40 damage, right? Cool, cool, cool. Here per Aether Grid. This one I love for two reasons, okay? But anyway, it's two in a red for this enchantment. Tap two artifacts you control. Tapping artifacts is good, right? Tapping clues, because why not? Also tapping down thing like, uh, tapping our Blink Moth Urn means other people aren't getting mana from our stuff, which is nice. Uh, D give her Aether Grid deals one damage to any target. Once again, one damage to any target. If this is out, it's about to be your turn. It's the previous player's end step is coming up. On their end step, tap all of your clues. Just start dealing a whole bunch of damage. Clear out their boards, deal a bunch of damage to someone's head, wherever you want. But every turn, you can just like get a whole bunch of extra stuff for free. Like You're just getting... Oh, getting so much value. Uh, yeah. Yay. Tutors. We've got some good tutors here. Booker's Hideout. Again, it enters the battlefield. You go get one. Uh, it automatically sacrifices itself. You gain one life. You go get, uh, what is it? Uh, not a forest because you don't have forest. A plains or an island. We also have a ca uh, ca Cabaretti. Cabaretti. Uh, no, I can't remember what it's called something weird but anyway basically they're like fetch lands that gave you they give you land as well or uh, give you life as well not land fetch lands to give you land uh, there you go cabaretti courtyard that's the one so we've got both of these very nice little fixing there and yeah the cabaretti is mountain forest or plains and this one again we don't have forest but it only says forest it doesn't show the green pip so this is legal in our deck Moon Silver Key. I've talked about this one already. Again, recur it from the graveyard and just keep getting stuff. Right? You can get basic land. All right, let's read it. Two for this artifact. Pay once and tap it. Sacrifice it. Search your library for an artifact card with a mana ability or a basic land. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. So whatever basic land you need, done. If you need to go get, like, you know... Chromatic Lantern, do it, or 500 Year Diary, and just have like piles of mana equal to the number of clues you have. Yeah, no problem either way. And worst case scenario, you can just go get like basic land for your mana fixing. So um, there's no wrong answer, I feel. Transmutation font, I for this. You create your choice of a blood token, a clue token, or a food token. Especially if um, you've got, um, 
It's nice to have access to blood token. I'm getting too many ideas at the same time. A candy manufacturer. If this is on the battlefield, remember, you make a food or a clue, it's going to make two more extra, right? Of different types of things. But that's important because you can pay three, tap it, sacrifice three artifact tokens with different names. Remember, that would also include the servos. Uh, search a library for an artifact card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. So just any artifact you want, you can put straight into the battlefield. Every turn, you can just go get an artifact and throw it straight into the battlefield. No questions asked. Oh boy. Amio's Journal. Buy for this legendary artifact at the beginning of your upkeep. You investigate? Yeah, sure. Tap, sacrifice three clues, search a library for a card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Tutor any card you want. If you need your win con, just go get it. There, you're done. You won the game. This is crazy. This is also like under $5 somehow. It should not be. Uh. Recursion. Okay, so we got Emery, Lurker of the Lock. Two and a white, a one, two. And the spell costs one less to cast it. For each artifact you control, you'll probably be able to cast her for one. So when she enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Sure. And tap to uh, choose target artifact card in your graveyard. You may cast the card this turn. So like I said, Moon Silver Key, just keep pulling it back out, or Wayfarer's Bauble, keep pulling it back out, sacrifice it, pull it back out, sacrifice it. Basically, there's your ramp covered right there. Moon Silver Key doesn't ramp you, but it does give you your mana artifacts, which are kind of rampy. Harman, Cruel Sky Marcher. Again, three and white black for this 2-2 two, two flyer. Whenever an, a, a player sacrifices a permanent, you're going to be sacrificing, other people might too. Put a plus one, plus one counter on her, and you gain one life. Okay, that's just the start of the good stuff. When she attacks, return up to one target permanent card with mana value less than or equal to her power from your graveyard to the battlefield. Straight from graveyard to the battlefield? And it just has to be her power or less. So there's no new Capenna fetches? Just keep pulling them back out and they immediately sacrifice themselves and go back to the graveyard and they go get a basic land you want and put it into the into the battlefield. So there's another kind of like rampy trick you can use. Pot back. Okay. Two white for this instant. Use up to two target permanent cards in your graveyard that were put there this turn for the battlefield. Uh, return them to the battlefield tapped. Yeah. Again, you could use this as like a pseudo ramp if you manage to get your like uh maybe both new capenna fetches on the same turn especially you could like play them both ramp two especially if you're playing one from the graveyard play one from your hand and then play uh brought back and then both pull them both in basically you're going to have four mana or four lands in one turn for two mana oh evasion whirler rogue Two blue blue for the two two. When it enters the battlefield, create uh, two one one Thropter artifact tokens with flying. More Thropters for sacking. That's great. Or blocking, I guess. Tap two untapped artifacts you control. Target creature can be blocked this turn. Again, more tap. Always nice. Tender Peacock we already talked about, but yeah. If you sacrifice a clue, target creature can't be blocked this turn. Super easy way to make something unblockable. Get Sarai Monk. We'll tap down everyone else's creatures. Yeah, also flash. So wait until so after someone's um uh sorry. Wait until after someone's untap step, when they're in their main one, flash him in, tap down the entire board, no attacking. So you can prevent someone from attacking, or you can prevent them from blocking, or frankly it does both. Right? If you tap down their entire board during their turn, during their main one, they can't go to combat and they're going to be open when you come in to attack on your turn. Martha Jones, whenever you sacrifice a clue, her and another target creature can be blocked this turn. It's kind of like Senator Peacock, but also includes herself and another. 
Kappa Cannoneer. Once again, we talked about him as well, but it's going to get so big and be unblockable, like all the time. Anyway, this has been Freya Clue Shaper. I hope you enjoyed it, and take it easy.